day from Bakers. Today I'm going to make an asparagus, asparagus quiche for our dinner tonight. So the first thing to do is to put the water on to blanch the uh, the asparagus. Gosh, I've got words out today. Blanch the asparagus. So put some salt in there. Just need to put that to boil. So we need to make pastry today and um, I'm just going to do an eight ounce mix. So all you, all you trainees out there, if I'm using eight ounces of flour, how much butter? Four ounces, that's right. So I need to weigh out four ounces of butter. I've just had this standing out of the fridge. So it's reasonably soft. Yeah, that's four ounces. So we're going to put that in there. Now, I spoke to Sarah, well, I had a, a message from Sarah earlier, but Elizabeth has spoken to her about my um, use of flour, I'm not saying what sort of flour, and I'm sorry about that, Elizabeth. This is plain flour, and if ever I make a sauce, like for the garlic mushroom pots, or if I'm using it as a thickening in soup, it's always plain flour, I tend to just keep the self-raising just for cakes. So this is just ordinary plain flour here and butter. You could use margarine if you haven't got butter. So I'm gonna rub that in with my fingertips. And by the time I've rubbed this in, I think my water would have boiled the asparagus. And if you can see the asparagus in front of me, I've cut it in half. because they're quite thick spears and quite long. And then that means I can get quite a bit of asparagus into my quiche. Right, let's get that all mixed in. So today I've um, spoken to Rebecca and her family and we're going to do an Indian banquet. I can't remember how many dishes we're doing, but I think it's about eight. <laughs> so, so it's an awful lot of work, but some of them don't take that long to do. So we'll, we'll see how we go. We can only do so much, but I might still be teaching Rebecca at eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> So, and I've also got a group chat today, so let's see who we can get on there. Lovely to see Alex Jocelyn earlier, so hopefully he can join in. Right, I'm just going to add a little bit of cold water. So if we're going to follow every recipe book in the world, it will be eight spoonfuls because it's one spoonful per ounce. But I like to just guess it because you... I often find that's too much and makes it too wet. You don't want it too dry, because it'll be crumbly and won't be able to do anything with it. But you don't want it too wet either, because then it just all sticks together and makes a terrible mess. So just bringing that together. Now luckily, because I'm quite a cold person, I've got quite good hands for pastry. You, you can't make pastry if you're, if you're like a little boiler just doesn't work. Right, there we are, so I think that's all gonna to come together now. Get that into a bowl and then I'll wash my hands so I can put the asparagus in. Yeah, it's coming together nicely. I don't wanna over, this is one thing that trainees do do, they, tend to treat it like it's bread dough. That's it, you don't want to work it any more than that. So I'll get rid of this water and wash my hands. It's been a lovely week this week and it's a bank holiday weekend. So let's hope it stays nice for the weekend. I expect you'll all be having barbecues outside. Maybe even going to the seaside, who knows? As long as you stay two metres apart from everyone else, you'll be all right. So that's finished with the butter. So let's put our asparagus in. And we've finished with this board. Let's get that out of the way. Just for a moment. I'll use that for my cheese in a little while. Right, so. I'm gonna roll out the pastry to fit the quiche dish now. So eight ounces makes sort of that size dish. There's only two of us in my house, so I don't need a massive dish. 
The ones we do at work, which are much bigger, we usually do for a 10 or a 12 ounce mix. So this rolling pin is very sentimental. My granddad gave it to me. Gave it to me when I was probably about 16, so it's quite old. If I was mean, I probably could have got away with six ounces of flour, but I like it to fill the dish nicely and I don't want any holes. So, we're nearly there. Uh, some people at work put mixed dried herbs in their pastry. Oops. To make it a little bit more exciting. I'm going to get it to fit into the dish. It will shrink a tiny bit. these into jam tarts or another little quiche just crinkle up our edges I'm just going to take this asparagus off and run cold water on it cold water stops it cooking so I've decided that's plenty long enough so let's put some Nice cold water. If, if I was in um, a production kitchen, I'd put it into some ice straight away, but just cold water will do here. So yeah, that's in some cold water. I'm just crinkling around our edges. Now, if you, I don't know many of you that would have a cooker like mine. I know some of, some of the trainees I've, I've learned have, have got cookers like mine. But if you're in a normal electric gas oven, what you do now is you put some greaseproof paper in the dish, and then I've got these, which are baking beads, which are stuck in there. Right, so there's just ceramic beads. So what you do is you put greaseproof paper in the ceramic beads, and then you put it in your oven for probably about 15 minutes just to brown off the pastry crisp it on the bottom so that when you put in your filling it doesn't go straight through now because of my cooker and because it is a solid bottom that is red hot it cooks at the bottom as quickly as it cooks at the top so I can actually get away with putting this in without cooking the pastry so pretend we're at home your home We've taken it, we've put our quiche in the oven with the baking be beans and the greaseproof paper. It's cooked, we've taken it out. So this is your pastry all cooked. So now, I'm going to put the asparagus in the bottom of the dish. I think what I'll do is I'll do all stalks round like a clock face. And then I'll put the spears in between. This is the, the spear of asparagus, the top bit, the tip. There we go, so a nice lot of asparagus. Now I'll grate some cheese. Oh, sorry, I made myself a coffee a little while ago. Right, let's have some cheese. This is just mature cheddar. 
If you put in something like red Leicester, it'll give it a nice colour. You could use blue cheese. I'm just going for a very traditional quiche here. And as, as asparagus is in season, I'm a great one for cooking things that are in season. So I like to, there'll be broad beans quite soon. My strawberries are all on the plants. So I can see them all. They've just got to get nice and red. But I can actually see them there now. Broad beans are in flower. Peas are in flower, so. And I've had raspberries out of the greenhouse, which is a bit bizarre. Our raspberries have self-seeded in the greenhouse, but I have eaten some. So I've got a jug and a fork. I've run out of um, normal cow's milk. So I'm gonna use oat milk. I've never used it for a quiche before. I presume it, it's fine. <laughs> we'll find out when I try to eat it later. So that's about half a pint. And to that, I'm going to add three eggs. Right, give that a good whisk. Oat milk is different to your milk, it's, it's almost a bit thicker, but I'm sure you can use it for this. That's what I put in my coffee, and I buy one of those cartons, and that will last me at least two weeks, so it's probably better that I'm using it up a bit. Right, so into that we're going to put some pepper. you could put in some herbs if you've got any herbs Simon had some lovely chopped chives in his and he did his and then we're just going to add that and that's going to go in the oven until it's cooked now you'll know when it's cooked because it will be brown but also when you give it a little shake it won't have too much of a wobble because you're actually going to try and cook the egg custard. Um, in my oven, it will probably take about 40 minutes. But if you've already pre-cooked your pastry and you're just doing the egg custard, you might get away with half an hour if you're lucky on about 180. Right, so I'm going to put this in. I'll try and remember to photograph it when it comes out so you can see what it looks like. Um, I actually forgot to photograph the apple and cinnamon cake I'm very sorry and that's now gone to the customer so happy baking just the perfect weather for quiche um I've done asparagus you could do cheese and tomato broccoli and ch broccoli and cheddar you could literally do whatever you've got in your store cupboard I won't say whatever I wouldn't want a parsnip quiche myself but have a look and see what you can find mushrooms are very nice in a quiche leeks are nice so yeah, there's lots of vegetables you can put in there just to use them up. Okay, well, happy baking and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.